accidentally grew a mutant. This mutant foxglove has a mutation called pellerism. It's a known mutation in the CYC gene that produces flowers that are radially symmetrical instead of its normal flowers, which are bilaterally symmetrical. What that means is you can slice this flower any way you want when looking at it from above, and you'll get two symmetrical halves. Normally, with bilateral symmetry, there's only one way you can slice the foxglove flower to get two equal halves, and that's directly vertically. I should point out that we humans are also bilaterally symmetrical. There's only one way you can slice us to get two equal halves, and that's directly down the middle. Now, I know those aren't perfect halves, but you know what I mean. Most flowers, it turns out, are radially symmetrical, and this is thought to be the ancestral condition of all flowers. If you look at the earliest flowers, like magnolias, no matter where you slice them, you get those two equal halves. This is also true of daisies, sunflowers, all kinds of stuff. Even if you look at the cones of gymnosperms, flowering plants, more ancient cousins, you're still gonna get these radially symmetrical cones. So bilaterally symmetrical flowers are thought to be a more recently evolved trait in these plants. And in plants like our foxglove here, it represents a move towards more specificity with regard to pollinators. If you think of a radially symmetrical flower, almost any kind of thing can land on it. Let's say a bee, a fly, a butterfly, and it'll still get pollen on it and it'll still be able to transmit it to another flower. Whereas these flowers are specifically designed for large bees, like a bumblebee, for example, to crawl in there and get pollen on its back and then carry that pollen to another flower. It wouldn't work with a really small insect or a, maybe a, an insect or animal that's too big to get in the flower to begin with. So these bilaterally symmetrical flowers represent this more recent evolutionary move towards greater pollinator specificity and co-evolution with pollinators. I should note that this isn't the first pyloric flower. They appear, you know, with some commonness randomly amongst uh, many different species of flower, including this one, foxglove. And uh, this trait was first discovered, or at least first written down, by the great Swedish scientist Carl Linnaeus in 1742, looking at some toad flax in his native Sweden. You might remember Carl Linnaeus is the guy who gave us the system of binomial nomenclature we use in biology, by which we could name this particular plant, the foxglove digitalis. Purpurea. I think this mutation looks super cool, and I'm going to try and reproduce it if I can. I hear that that's not always a sure thing, but we'll see how it goes.